Okay, so we can't go to the haunted house. How are we supposed to solve this exactly? If I can't get permission to investigate the crime scene, then the truth will be lost. Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! Okay. My theme music is playing now, which means I'm gonna do something awesome! Mr. Edgeworth, what are you doing spacing out? Have you forgotten? There's only one thing you should do at a time like this. Uh, panic and cry? What is that? When the people are in a bind, the hero of justice appears to save the day. Look, you just leave it to me! For I am Kay Faraday, the second of the great Yadagadasu! But I thought you were a thief, not a hero. It could be two things! The Yadagadasu is noble and is always a thief of justice. That's... Of course... Ah, oh, you can recreate the... Oh, that's clever. If you have enough information, I can recreate the inside of the haunted house with this. That's just convenient. Plus, if we then factor in everyone's testimony, you can recreate exactly what happened when I dropped off the ransom money. We may be able to figure out some new information through this. It's worth a try. I vote we do it. Agent Lang. Ah, so you want to use your little toy? Be my guest. I got nothing better to do today. Okay, hang on. You're all about to witness the true power of a real modern day Robin Hood. Detective Gumshoe, is there a copy of the Haunted House's blueprints among the police reference documents? Yes, sir. We got it just in case we needed it for the kidnapping case. And I had it in my coat the entire time. All right, I'll input the Haunted House data then. Check this noise! Oh, that's a little too flawless if I'm being honest with you, but okay, sure. Well, what? Did, where are we? It's like we're inside the haunted house. Even if we can't inspect the L'Oreal location itself, the path to the truth slumbers here. If I can successfully navigate my way using logic ho, I'll ultimately arrive at the truth. Now then, I believe I'm ready to investigate the crime scene. All right then. Okay, what should I recreate first? You haven't figured it out yet? Eh, maybe I have and maybe I haven't, but I'm gonna make you do all the hard work. <laughs> all right then, very well. I'd like to inspect the moment in which I was ambushed by my abductor. The two of them were definitely in this place at the time. If I can verify that, it may provide me with a new lead. If I just come out into the hallway after leaving the money inside the dining room. At that time, I saw a badger slumped over on the floor at the end of the hall. Eh? What was the badger doing all the way down there? Lying in wait, obviously! I also thought it was strange. However, I thought that maybe it was simply a mannequin that was set there for atmosphere. Do you know which badger it was? Well, I know it was the proto-badger, so that helps. No, it was too dark to tell. All I saw was its silhouette. Hmm. In that case, I guess I'll just program a badger silhouette in for now. Whatever works! Okay, programming complete! Get your shine on! Right, that badger do be silhouetted, though. Then I started walking towards the exit. Very, very slowly, if they could catch up. And that's when you were struck from behind, right? All right, I guess technically he doesn't even realize that he was attacked by a badger yet. But that's odd. The hallway is a dead end. Where did your assailant come from? There's only one location I can think of. I believe my assailant was lying in wait here. As if it weren't obvious! That doll I saw wasn't really a doll. It was in fact a costumed kidnapper. Oh, so he used the costume as the perfect camouflage to blend in with the rest of the house. Precisely. He waited until I had made the drop off and was about to leave. Then, just as he saw me take a step towards the exit, he stood and launched his attack. I can think of no better hiding place than this. Hey, not bad. I'm beginning to think I should steal this tactic for myself. Just don't use it to do anything criminal, Kay. I promise you nothing, because that is how the Kay Faraday do. Walking over causing crimes, whoa. Well, Lance, what, 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 what are you asking me for other than the fact that it's obvious I did it? As one of the kidnappers, I figured I should give you the chance to confess first. I was one of the kidnappers, but I don't know anything. I did come up to the haunted house, but I never set foot inside. Now, okay, that's obviously a lie. I left Oliver in charge of picking up the ransom money. He didn't set foot inside? Is he telling the truth, or is this yet another lie? Alright, then you're claiming that it was Mr. Deacon who assaulted me? Yes, I'm sure it was him. Okay, inputting the new info now. Mr. Deacon was the bad badger, right? Since the bad badger has a gun attached to its right hand, 
I'll have to change it so the weapon is in his left hand. Okay, but I know for a fact that that was not actually the case. Like, actually, factually, I know this. How do I prove that it wasn't that badger and that he was... That's the wrong thing and... Oh, Lord, there's so much I gotta do. Now, to verify the facts of this recreation. Alrighty, let's start with looking at this itself. You didn't recreate the weapon. Well, I can't exactly recreate something I know nothing about. So tell me, what were you hit with? The attack came from behind, so I have no idea. But I doubt it was someone's bare hands. Um, okay, then where were you hit? I was hit on the right side of my head, just above my temple. There was a bit of blood, but it wasn't anything serious. Ow! Sounds painful. Why are you smirking like that when you say it? It's just your imagination. Okay, now let's... <laughs> mildly concerning. I wonder if there's anything in the hallway that could have been used as a weapon other than that sword on the, on the floor there. I mean, what are the odds of that, though? If I'm looking for something the culprit could have used to hit you with, it was probably the freaking sword. Take that! I have it! There was indeed one such object lying here in this hallway. A prop sword. Are you talking about this thing here? Yes. Although we did find it at the kidnapper's hideout. Wait, yes, it's possible that the culprit took it with him after using it on me. To leave no evidence behind, right? Correct. It may be worth a more thorough examination yet. Okay, so what test do you want to run on the sword? Uh, well, prints are literally pointless, and you said there was some blood. So if we could find Edgeworth's blood on this thing, that's definitive. The culprit was wearing a costume at the time, so a fingerprint analysis is useless. Let's run a luminol test. It's possible that some of my blood found its way onto this. Agent Lang, may I ask for your cooperation in this matter? Eh, like I have a choice except for the fact that I do and it could just say no. Sheena, call the lab boys. Or just call Emma, she's also here. I'm sure she'd be happy to do it. Except for a dab on the left side, it would appear that the blade is spotless. So it must have been on the left side of the prop sword that hates you then. Okay, but if it did that, then yeah, that already proves that it's in the wrong hand. Okay, I'll update the recreation with this new piece of info. Beep, beep, bada, bada, beep, beep. All right, well, we're slightly closer to the actual solution here. Okay, so, uh, yeah, no, that, that, that's not a thing. Uh, okay, so... Hang. Okay... But... Is this spot somehow connected? Yeah, I, uh... I mean, because of where the, the blood is. If he swung it from that angle, then it would be, have blood on the other side. Yeah, so... Eureka. Eureka, yes? Eureka, yes! Finally, I found a clear contradiction of facts about this sword! Except for a bit on the left side, this prop sword is absolutely spotless. However, if the culprit had used his left hand, the blood would be on the opposite side. The opposite side? Huh? If the culprit held the sword in his left hand, then the sword's right side would hit. I see. But the blood was on the left side of the sword, right? Which means that he used his right hand to hit you. Exactly. The prop sword has a large handguard attached to the hilt. It would be impossible to hold it with two hands while wearing a costume with such big hands. Therefore, if it couldn't be the left or hand or both hands, it must have been the right. I'll change the data to reflect a right-handed swing. Not yet, Kay! There's no sense in changing anything yet. If you change the parameters to the right hand, it'd only create a new contradiction. Changing the prop sword to be in the culprit's right hand would conflict with what? Um... I mean... It would be the gun that's in the thing, I, I would guess. The bad badger already holds a gun in his right hand, so he can't hold a sword in addition. Hey, that's right. Then what now? If it wasn't in his left hand or his right hand means that the one who struck me could not have been the bad badger. Are you paying attention, Lance? Nah. Mr. Deacon could not have been the one who struck me, which leaves only you as our primary suspect. Nah. Fine, it was me. I hit you. It appears that you lied to me yet again. Let's see how quickly they catch up to you, Lance. Wait, isn't Lance left-handed? Ah, uh, yes, but well, that's what makes this deception all the more interesting. He used his right hand to make it look like Mr. Deacon had been the one to strike me. For you see, firing a gun with one's non-dominant hand is difficult. But the level of dexterity isn't required to swing a prop sword. Back up, Rockin! Okay, please input this new data. The one who hit me from behind was Lance. 
Or should I say, the Proto Badger and its creepy face? Trust me, if Edsworth actually turned around to see it, he would have remembered. Seriously, why do they even have that thing? What kind of lore and, and universe has the prototype version of a character as its own separate character? That's just weird. Now we have a faithful recreation of the situation around the, the attack on me. Bleh. All right. All we have to do is examine the new recreation and... What? <laughs> what exactly is so funny, Agent Lang? That amusing little gadget. Sure packs a punch, right, Shin? Uh, she or not? That's so hard for me to remember. Yes. It was all I could do to hold my laughter in. You think you're funny? Hey! Don't make fun of little thief, you mean old werewolf. Me and Mr. Edgeworth bring out the best in each other. Or he and it, whatever. You've had your little fun, but now it's my turn. I've sat quietly by, listening. Not actually paying attention, but listening. But the crude conclusions you two keep spewing don't whet this wolf's appetite. Good lord. Again, can we just go back to the fact that you once called Edgeworth a cliche? Good lord. There's no guarantee that your toy will always show the real situation at any given time. All it displays is whatever information you put in there, right? Well, when you put it that way... Your suppositions are wrong! It's not your fault, so I'm gonna let you in on this. There's a trick to this haunted house. And what may that be exactly? A trick beyond what your tiny imaginations can produce. Sheena? Here you are. Good, I'm glad we had that included. That was very vital. Now then, what you missed, girly, is written here, right in this pamphlet. The Seven Wonders of the Haunted House. The Disappearing Badger? What is this? I'd say that someone around here is fond of theatrics. And as you can see, they set a doll down at the end of this hallway for that purpose. Basically, the blue badger you saw was just a stupid doll. Okay, but I know that's not true. How, how could this be? Guess that throws your whole theory about it being your attack right out the window. But, but that can't be right. Maybe the culprit hid the doll somewhere. And then he laid down and pretended to be it instead. If the criminal couldn't even hide himself in the hallway, how could he hide a giant doll? <laughs> Do you get it now? Thanks to your perceptions, your logic started off weak and led you to the completely wrong conclusion. Karg! Now get off your high horse! Nay! I shall get on a higher horse! Mr. Edgeworth. Okay, I wonder if you could please input the new information for me. You don't know when to quit, do you? No, but only because I'm right. I can't quit. Not until I can declare that I found the truth. Agent Lang, for the additional information, you have my thanks. Tch. Here you go again. Well, see if I care. He cares. <laughs> see if I care, he said, caring deeply. Okay, I'm updating the recreation now. Beep, beep, bada, bada, beep, beep. And there's obviously got to be something going on here. That looks really weird. Look at how it changes from the blue badger into the proto badger all of a sudden. If the slumped over badger was just a doll, where was my attacker hiding? Well, that's what we're going to find out, right? So, come on, Mr. Edgeworth, let's go! Yes, let's... This recreation can't be right, which means there must be a contradiction somewhere. So I'm gonna have to do myself some looking about. Alright, but first and foremost, Gumshoe, what do you have to say? I... I can't believe what I'm seeing, sir. The space that I'm standing in is like some out of some sort of crazy dream. Except that this isn't a dream. This is something... Uh, this is something K's gadget. No, wait. This is exactly like a dream, sir. I've never been so impressed. It's a miracle. Alright, sure. Someone sure is easily impressed. How is this not massively impressive? Hehe. <laughs> I'm so glad you like it. She's doing her happy jumps! Oh, so this is a product of your gadget? No, I wish I had one too. Well, once this is over, I'll let you play with it for a bit if you want. You do that for me, pal? Thanks! Alright, let's wrap this case up already. It's times like these that I wonder if they understand the seriousness of the situation. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. What difference does it make? Alright, let's go take ourselves a look. This is where the Proto Badger shows up in our recreation. Yes, now the question is, where did he come from and where did he go? Where did he come from, Blue Badger Joe? Yeah, but there's no problem to hide in our current model. There's no place to hide in our, in our current model. There must be an inconsistency somewhere. Alright, let's see. Maybe this is a thing. 
All right, what exactly is there for me to see? Let us examine. The blue badger is just a doll for use in this haunted house. I bet the one who killed this blue badger was the bad badger, right? According to the blue badger Bible, it says that they are each other's worst enemies. Oh! Okay, hang on, I think I noticed something. All because one's an ally of justice and the other's a vile criminal with a gun. Perhaps they were just destined to battle each other. Much like the Steel Samurai and the Evil Magistrate. But I won't say that part out loud. Okay! I don't entirely know if this is the right way to go about it, but let's find out. I will now toss the Blue Badger Bible in your face! Hold on a second here! There's something wrong with this Blue Badger. I mean, that that's a bit of an overstatement, but sure. Huh? Like what? The way the belt is on him is opposite of how it should be. Did you make a mistake? I can't be. I inputted the image data exactly as it is in the pamphlet. So then why is the blue badger dressed up in reverse? Interesting. Okay. Uh, anything else to look at around these parts? She doesn't look like it. Okay. Huh. Okay. All right. How about you? When you take a look around, it almost feels like more of a house of mirrors. Indeed. Who's ever heard of this many mirrors inside a haunted house before? Well, at least we know this is the real crime scene thanks to those mirror shards. Oh! 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 I know about it's like the, the the haunted mansion ride. Hey, wait! These shards. There's something different about them. I don't remember the name of the 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 the, the trick that you do in order to make the thing do the thing, but I I think I know how, what they did. The ones we found earlier are thicker than the shards from these mirrors on the wall. And look, there's some sort of design on the back too. The pieces from that costume are certainly different from the other mirrors. What does this mean? Could it be that our pieces are not pieces of these mirrors? I believe that I might, maybe, conceivably, know what to do. It's not like I have a lot of different things to connect, so let's see if this works. It does! Okay, do you remember what you said earlier? No, not especially. What? I said earlier about what? About how this building might as well have been a house of mirrors? A house of mirrors? Oh! Well, that would explain the reversed or mirror image. Yes, this blue badger might be nothing more than the reflected image of a real one. Then, was the blue badger you saw just a reflection? When I looked down the hall, I thought it was perfectly straight. However, if there was a mirror... Oh, then it would actually form an L-shape, right? Precisely! I was deceived, and that's the greatest crime of all, aside from the murder. Uh, the hallway was almost pitch black. And there was a beam in the way that obstructed my view of the other hallway. Wait, but why would they... Why build this place like that? Sounds pretty pointless to me. Okay, this house is just another attraction at an amusement park. You don't design these things as if they're actual buildings. They created a mirror wall for a very specific purpose. One I can point out to you now. This was the reason they built a mirror wall. Um, so that they could do the, the trick, I would assume, yeah? And where is the Waterland pamphlet? Yeah, because they wanted to do the thing. As it's written in the pamphlet, the main draw of this attraction is the mystery of the disappearing badger. You mean they built the mirror for that trick alone? But you said you saw the badger, so it was definitely still there. That well, was true at the time, however, doing this allows someone to make the blue badger disappear in a flash. Just move the dang wall. To remove a reflected image, simply move the mirror. First, the mirror was constructed so that it could be moved. Then, beyond where the mirror was, an empty hallway had to be created. Ah, so when they wanted people to see the blue badger, they would open the mirror. And when they wanted to hide it, they simply had to close it again. Fancy! This explains why the other side of these fragments have a design on them. Ah, and if the pattern is the same as the others in the hallway, then when the mirror is closed, it would blend in with the rest of the walls. This is the mirror trick that this haunted house employs! And this also proves the existence of a hiding place for the culprit. Eh? How so? What do you mean, how so? Think about it, Kay! There was a place that was outside of my field of vision! Really? That's what we're doing right now? All right, sure. Yeah, you could have just hidden behind the dang wall. It was a very large blind spot, and I could not see beyond it was here. See? And if my assailant hid on the other side of the movable mirror, then you wouldn't be able to see him. 
He didn't even need to do anything to the blue badger at all. Exactly. All he had to do was wait for me to, uh, was wait for me on the other side of the mirror. Wait, hold on. I just thought of something. Yes? Well, shouldn't the mirror wall be broken right now? In reality? Hmm. Since we have a few shards of it, we can probably assume it is. Yes, it most definitely is broken. The question is, when was it broken? <gasps> oh! Hey, hey, hey! Edge, Edgeworth, Edgeworth, ah, uh, he can't hear me. But, like, um, when we went into the dining room that first time, wasn't there a loud, like, glass-breaking noise? Since we found these inside the victim's costume, that would mean that the victim was there when the mirror was broken. Wait, that sound. Yay! I was right! Leave the money and go. Now. Hey! Either that or Dracula's nearby. That sound I heard was most definitely the sound of a mirror breaking. Okay, I'd like you to input some new information. Yeah, I guess. Don't scare me like that. Don't tell me what to do. Sorry, but I need you to recreate something for me. Sure, whatever you need. So, uh, what do you need anyway? If you could first recreate this hallway just before I enter the dining room. You got it. Let me just use some science real quick and bada boom. Hey, there you go. Now this, I believe this is how it was right before I entered the dining room. Although at the time I thought it was but a single straight hallway. And then I went inside. It was around then that I heard the sound of a mirror shattering. You heard what then? Yes, I believe it was then that the mirror was broken. Okay, so then when you stepped outside into the hallway again, the mirror wall should no longer exist. Okay, please recreate that. Got it. That's gonna be fun to replace. Ta-da! Wait, but with the mirror gone, the culprit lost his hiding spot. So, where did he go in his proto-badger suit, Mr. Edgeworth? Ha! That's easy enough. With the mirror gone, he simply hid himself in the branch hallway. Yeah, I think this about wraps it up. Makes sense to me. Looks like we finally solved everything! No, not yet. An even larger contradiction has now reared its head. In what regard? Eh? Perhaps you did not notice. But this recreation contains a very troubling inconsistency. The inconsistency between what I saw and the recreation lies... Eh? Um... Because it was still there. Well, why couldn't he have just hidden there? Okay, take a good look at the end of the hall. Oh, there's no blue badger there. Exactly, the blue badger that I saw in reality is not here. This is the final point on the long chain of logic. The last remaining contradiction. Well, the theme music is going, so we're probably doing just fine. Nothing to worry about. No. Oh, okay, I guess we're done with that. So let me get this straight. When you came out of the dining room, you saw a badger, right? And that is precisely where the final contradiction lies. Something that shouldn't exist was there before me. Who, or what do you suppose it was? I believe this is the real identity of our mystery, our mystery badger. Uh, I assume, hang on. The victim, yeah? The badger I saw was in actuality the dead victim's body. Action pose. Agent Lang, the entirety of my complete logic is my final decisive piece of evidence. The murder happened in the hallway of the haunted house at the time of the drop-off. And you can consider the moment I heard the mirror breaking to be the real time of death for Mr. Deacon. No! Yes! Maybe it was due to their fighting, or perhaps it was the life-shattering bullet. But no matter what the cause was, the hallway mirror wall was broken. Heh! You were in the house at the time, right? Are you telling me that you missed the sound of a gunshot? There were a variety of sound effects playing at the time. All for theatrics, I assume. The gunshot must have blended right in. Back it, back it, back it! Now then, I'd like you to recall something for me. Who was it that was with the victim at the haunted house? Who was the one who had the opportunity to rob the victim of his gun and use it on him? It was you, Lance Amato! Ah, well, there you go, then.
Are you though? Are you though? It's not like I had a choice. Oliver turned on me all of a sudden. He snapped and turned violent right after I hung up with you. He shoved me to the ground and straddled me. I fought back as hard as I could, grabbed his gun, and I shot him. The bullet must have went through his body and shattered the mirror. If I hadn't taken his gun and shot him first, I would have been the one you found. He's a hardened criminal. He escaped from jail. See? That's justified self-defense. My boy was only trying to protect himself. That remains to be seen and will have to be resolved in court. Point is, Pops doesn't need to be arrested. Well, actually, no, oh, wait. She was still... I mean, she was still a, a, a part of the kidnap. Then again, I guess the kidnapping didn't really... I guess it depends if you press charges on that specifically. Which I guess they could do out of spite. Yeah, okay. Well, either way, she's not guilty of murder. I got that one down. So we're good. Agent Lang, I leave the rest to you. <laughs> As if you were the one in charge around here. Guys, arrest these two and get them out of my sight. Wait, I had nothing to do with the murder. You very clearly did. The only person you should be arresting is Lance. Dad! Oh, dead. Great, now he's dead. Sorry, but you're not slipping away that easily, Mr. Ernest Amano. You tampered with the evidence so that you could cover for your son. Which is a pretty serious crime, I dare say. What a great dad you are, willing to risk it all. Truly touching. <laughs> By the way, do you know why I'm really here? Eh. And how could I possibly know the answer to such an asinine question? You wound me. I came all the way from across the sea just to see you, you know. You did? You came to see me? What's that supposed to mean? I have a few things to ask you, Mr. Amano, about the case from ten years ago. A case from ten years ago? No. What's the name that you use here for that case? Shina! It's known as the KG-8 incident. Well, that's clearly important. The KG-8 incident? Oh, so you remember it. Good. Then you recall that the trigger in that case was the Amano Group scandal. Specifically, the charge of an internal smuggling ring. Smuggling! There's that word again. At the time, the person that was arrested as the ringleader was Mr. Amano's very own secretary, Mr. Colin Devoray. Uh, father. That would explain the vanishing act. And even though you punished the crime, uh, pushed the crime onto your then secretary, Mr. Devoray, I always suspected that you were involved with the smuggling ring, Mr. Amano. Mr. Devoray was arrested in place of you. Which is why he, when he broke out, you hid him from the police, right? You hid him in exchange for his silence on your little dirty secret. Now, 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 now. Please calm down. I honestly have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Pretend to be ignorant all you want. I don't think he's pretending. I, he, could be, he could be evil and ignorant. We're taking you down to the precinct anyway for a nice long chat. Yeah, your flop sweat ain't saving you this time. Who's holding what? Why are there so many people? What the? Who the heck was that? What? I'll take him down to the precinct if you don't mind. Who the heck are you? What? I'm Jacques Portsman, and I'm the prosecutor. You were ar arrested. Oh, Jacques, thank goodness you're here. Don't jerk me around. There's an Interpol case, so keep your paws off my suspect. What is it? I... Also, that's... That's but... But he's died. What? Sorry, but I can't comply. I've got the backing of the prosecutor's office. See, in this country, prosecutors work with the police to bring cases to court. So if you could please cooperate with me here, that'd be great. Now, how about a handshake to seal the deal? Sorry, but I hate prosecutors. The whole lot of you. Um... Oh, wait! No! No, wait, hang on. Okay, so wait. At the beginning of the game, after we finished the trial, we went two days into the past, which was the airplane, and then I guess this happened immediately after that, and then shortly after this, then the stuff with Portsmouth happens? But if that's the case, then how come Edgeworth didn't know who Portsman was if it happened... Like, a day later at most. Or, didn't he didn't know who he... That's weird. 
Uh, I'm probably thinking too much. It, it, it lines up. I, I, I uh, Guys, arrest these two suspects. Sir! Ah, oh, I almost forgot. Prosecutor Miles Edgeworth, is it? I'd like to thank you. Thank me? Yeah, for working so hard to fulfill my goal. Hey, is that any way to thank someone? What the heck is that supposed to mean? You were so relentless with Lance that you're forced Ernest to tamper with the evidence. Thanks to that, I finally had a legitimate reason to arrest him. So, how's it feel to bite the hand that feeds you? What? The hand that feeds me? I'm not sure I follow. <laughs> it's no use pretending with me. You're the one, right? You're the corrupt prosecutor that's working for Mr. Amano in the smuggling ring, right? That was literally Portsman, you dumbass. No, I would never do such a thing. Oh my god, you're bad at your job, Lang. <laughs> what the heck? Her intel's never wrong, except for all of the times it's clearly wrong. In your prosecutor's office, there's definitely someone working with the ring. Then wait... I'm confused as to why Edgeworth at the beginning of the game not only didn't know who Portsman was, but also didn't seem to know about the smut. Okay, whatever. I'm sure I'm just misremembering how he's phrased things. I'm sure that I'm sure it makes sense. That must be the real reason behind his antagonistic attitude. On top of that, your mentor is Manfred von Karma, right? Legally, this is true. There were non-stop rumors flying around about forged evidence with that guy. You're not twisting the truth behind those closed courtroom doors, too, are you? The courtroom is a place where the truth is revealed. <laughs> oh, like I'm gonna believe you. Well, don't worry. It's not only you. The whole lot of you can't be trusted. That prosecutor who never lost in 40 years. Every defendant must be found guilty. Fueled by those ideas, is any wonder that courts produce nothing but falsities and lies? Didn't you openly admit to arresting anybody you found suspicious and just hoping for the best? It would seem that his disdain extends beyond just me. Prosecutors, the courts. Why is this man so angry with us all? Rest assured, the next time we meet, I won't be so for forgiving. Yeah, cool. You know, I could easily have that exact synchronized movements too if I wanted. So don't you forget it. You know what good thing about you is your theme song. Please wait. Agent Shina. Why does Agent Lang hate all prosecutors so? Lang is the head of the long-honored House of Lang in Zengfa. The heads of all police-related divisions in that country were of Lang blood. Were? What do you mean by that? Aren't they still? They were revered, but that was long ago. They don't hold that sort of sway anymore. It was all because of the courts. How can that be? A prosecutor once withheld and tampered with the evidence one of the Lang detectives found. That evidence purity was tarnished and cost the Lang family its honor and trust. From one time something bad happened that immediately threw all trust of his bloodline out the, way, out, the, out the window? That seems a little extreme, doesn't it? But not all prosecutors are like that. I can think of at least two that are at least of mildly decent quality, including myself. I mean, I guess Winston Payne isn't that bad a guy, he's just bad at his job. Even so, Lang will never respect the court again, or any prosecutor. So Agent Lang is a man who hates all courts and is unwilling to forgive prosecutors. Huh. Man, what a piece of work that guy is. Come on, Jim. We better catch up. We can murder each other later. <laughs> we still got to deliver that thing to the old man, after all. Detective Gumshoe, I believe it's time we wrapped up and head home ourselves. Yeah, are you going home too, Mr. Edgeworth? No, I've done nothing but be entangled in one mess after another since my return. If it's alright with you, you can drop me off at my office. No problem, sir. Oh, cool, and that's when, yeah, that's when the first thing happens. That's fun. Um, excuse me? Yes? What is it? Um, I, that is, thank you very much. Ah, it's okay. No need to thank me, pal. Come see you did nothing. Just doing my job as a detective. I guess I was fooled pretty badly by Lance. Nick, Nick. Oh, cruel fate! What's a woman to do when she's hurt by the one she loves? 
be bummed out for a while and then eventually move on and be better than you were in the past. That's my best guess. And to think I never realized my father was right there. I never said anything to him. I knew it. I, I'm a failure. Ah, there she goes again, talking to herself. Having an existential meltdown. Ha <laughs> ha. Fun. Miss Pops. I wonder if you know why your father participated in the kidnapping. No, oh, I have no idea. Your father died while he was trying to stop Lance. Which means that from the beginning, he had no interest in the stage self-abduction. Wait, then why did he... I believe it was because of your presence, Miss Pops. Me? Lance realized that the two of you were related. Which is why he used you as a hostage to coerce Mr. Devoray into cooperating. Father. As a felon, he could not tell you of his relation to you. However, as the Amano family butler, at the very least, he was able to watch over you. It was all he could do, but that was the shape of his overflowing love for you. That's not so bad. I mean, it's a small, small, small silver lining in this grand scheme, but it's something. Go on, speak your mind. I, 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 um, that is... Th thank you very much. You're welcome. Although, there is no need to thank me. Ah, no, Lauren, stop. I mean, this, this man's so much older than you. He can't be that much old. How old are you? Hang on. Let me see. Lauren Pops. 19. Uh, I'm pretty sure Edgeworth is like, what, 26, 27 around this point? Somewhere around there? That's not that bad. That's like the second woman so far to fall for Edgeworth in this game. <laughs> Looks like you completely stolen her away, Mr. Edgeworth. Way to go, sir. Your technique is way beyond the level of a great thief. What are you going on about now? Ha! <laughs> He's dumb. Wow, your deducing skills may be sound, but you have no street smarts. That's Mr. Edgeworth for you. Da 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 da. Yeah. I mean, he still hasn't figured out who I am at all. Eh? If you haven't remembered in all this time, I guess I'm just gonna have to say it. This isn't the first time we've met you, no? What, what do you mean, pal? Mr. Edgeworth, how do you know this girl? <laughs> Looks like you totally forgot me too, Gummy. Gummy? I am perplexed and intrigued. Here, maybe this will jog your memories. I promised I'd return this to you one day, remember? That's... That single piece of cloth took me back, far into my past. To that fateful day seven years ago when I first met the then child K. Wait, and Detective Gun? Shoot, wait. So you met K as a child seven years ago, but you don't remember it happening? Unless you only just barely bumped into her, I. D it wasn't that long ago. I remember things seven years ago. Are we going to have, like, a, a flashback, or... Like, what, what, what do we get? Turnabout Reminiscence! Ooh, are we getting a flashback case? That sounds fun! Ooh, I like that idea a lot! Okay, cool, cool, cool! Uh, that was a lot of fun! I like that! We got to meet Kay, we solved a, we, we, we solved a fake kidnapping and all that business, we saw Emma again. That's a lot of cool stuff that happened! And in the next part, I can only hope we're getting some kind of flashback case. That would be so cool! What if you play as like a like younger Edgeworth, like pre-good guy Edgeworth? That'd be dope. Oh man, I hope that's the case. Uh, until then, I hope you all had a fun time. I'll see you all then.